Hello everyone and welcome to Jumperman Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY. Today we got a service call for two split system heat pumps. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumperman Tech. Today we have a service call for two train split system air cooled heat pumps. We have a complaint that there is water coming from the ceiling on the indoor blowers. Let's go ahead and see what's going on. Currently have the thermostat off. I took off two of the control panels. One thing I noticed right away, this capacitor is extremely rusted out. Contact is in very bad shape. We have extremely pitted contacts. Same thing for this capacitor up here. And do notice that we have some kind of error code here I believe it is an error code this one's not blinking this one is looks like something blew up over here and look at that contact right here on the left side the contacts literally blew up it's literally there's the piece of the contactor right there First things first, what I would like to do is replace these capacitors if I have them. This 100% needs to be replaced. This wire is burnt out as well. And I would replace this one on top of that right off the bat. Got rid of these rusty capacitors. Got a new one with new connections. Looks great. Let's go ahead and uh, swipe out contactors I actually got the covers back on but we did swap out both contactors and both capacitors we're gonna go and turn on the power and see what happens so we got new capacitors new contactors here now at the blowers two blowers in the ceiling super high up you can see water is coming down pulled out the filters they were completely packed if you look got a block of ice on that coil this one's looking good this one is a block of ice turn off the power for the condensing units I want to see if I have air movement so if the fan goes bad you'll ice up all right both fans are running we gotta let this one on the left defrost because we will not have any proper temperature reading, excuse me, pressure reading. And we gotta take it from there. While we let things defrost. What's on the menu? <laughs> this is a real monkey, this is taxidermy. Wow. Uh, nothing to drink from me, huh? <laughs> also, look how packed these filters are heavy so if the filters are completely packed you're restricting the airflow and that can cause the system to ice up as well but let's get it defrosted and check pressures from there all right we've got a standing pressure of about 230 psi 236 on this one and on this one 225 standing pressure so cool defrosted inside put all the covers back on we got clean filters new contactors on both and new capacitors on both Let's see what happens start one up all right compressor started it's refrigerant 410a Give this a couple minutes so the pressures can balance out all right so for the left unit is the one that the contactor just broken off back pressure at 111 head pressure at 314 for during 410 only have one degree superheat seems slightly 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 low but we do have a 37 degree suction line and we are definitely sweating here so that's good we're way reversing valve doing its job let's let that run we'll 
let's start this one up. I hear the compressor started. coming up let's give it a few minutes to average out and see what these guys do super heat is at about 10 sub going is about 17 it's just our back pressure seems a bit low 103 for 410a and a 331 head for this unit we're at 125 head 37 uh, 125 back through a 275 head very strange but we do have good temperatures and the units are working might be a small leak in the system it could be from people taking the gauges on and off but this head pressure quite higher than this one I mean the pressures are completely whacked out between these two and it's the same unit let's let these run and see what happens pressure is pretty much evened out they are slightly off it's a bit strange that this has a lower back pressure with a higher head pressure compared to this unit this has a lower head pressure and higher back something's definitely off with the charge what i would like to do is weigh in the charge but really pull a good vacuum on it but it's gonna be a big party tonight and it's just about that time to get out of here this unit goes back to 2009 and yeah, we're gonna let it be for it now. We're not icing up anymore. We got good pressures. All this is satisfied on its own. It's running. Got a bit of strange pressures, but yeah. This one had that broken contactor. We replaced both contactors, replaced both capacitors. They obviously both run. Pressures are a bit strange, but yeah, we found the, one of the coils were frozen up. That one had a plugged air filter. And that could restrict the airflow. With the restriction of airflow, you will freeze up the coil. The other one, even though the filter was plugged, it was slightly off the rack, so it was still breathing. So that's what I'm thinking that one didn't freeze up. Got it defrosted, got everything going, and we're gonna let them be. But I will recommend that you know you pull a good vacuum after we recovered the refrigerant put a fresh charge of refrigerant change this filter dryer for some reason there's a filter dryer here if you guys can look i don't know if you could see it but there's actually a filter dryer down there that looks horrendous this is the other condensing unit has a filter dryer coming out of the discharge line all right so there's a filter dryer inside there and another one back here so this unit got two filter dryers it's uh, reversible anyways what i would want to do is replace those filter dryers pull a good vacuum and put a fresh charge in here and that should help out the system but regardless this is gonna be it we're gonna close everything up and they have air conditioning if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe catch you all next time